My name is Judith Sloan. I am an artist and writer and multimedia artist. I want to focus on this aspect of the American dreamscape, what used to be a widely held conception of the United States of America as a place that is colorblind, a land of immigrants where the tired, poor, huddled masses come to our shore and welcome here. And what does this mean, really, make America great again? In what way? I keep hearing people say that America has always welcomed the wretched refuge, but not really. It's always been a push and pull. And I want to take a look at how things get ignored, repeated. History often gets stomped on. And this is kind of making me furious, this kind of ignorance of how history is repeating. I live in Queens, which is the most ethnically diverse locality in the United States. And in 2003, my husband, Warren Lair, and I came out with a book in a multimedia project documenting new immigrants who came to the US after the 1965 Immigration Act, which changed the demographics of the country. My own grandparents fled war and persecution and were religiously and racially targeted by Nazis. And in 1990, I moved to Queens. Nine years later, we traveled the world through the eyes of our neighbors with a metro card, a camera, a microphone, and an open heart and mind. And our project focused on personal stories of people who came to this country. But in the back of the book, we have a timeline of immigration law and policy how did we get here? It's not an accident in this current time in 2017. Even before the country's independence, the ideology of white supremacy was used to justify cruelty, murder of, and profiting off of human beings. In 1790, any free white person could become a citizen of the United States. That was the policy. In 1776, Thomas Jefferson pens, all men are created equal in the Declaration of Independence, but at the same time owns hundreds of enslaved Africans. And at the same time, the Pennsylvania Society for Promoting the Abolition of Slavery is founded, and yet it took another 90 years for the 13th Amendment to be passed. Chinese immigrants arrived during the gold rush, and you can see the same kinds of no, 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 you know, graffiti or images that were pushing people out, and there was a law to keep Chinese people out based on the fact that they weren't free whites. In 1886, the Statue of Liberty becomes an icon of freedom and welcome. The rise of the Industrial Revolution in the 1890s creates the need for cheap labor, and large influxes of immigrants come in from Southern and Eastern Europe. Popular journals start filling in like 1917 with hostile references to newcomers. No laborers allowed from the Asiatic Bard Zone. And you can see this literacy test wall that's in that image. Is the wall a new thing or has it been recycled from an earlier time? In 1921, there was an immigration all-time high, and in reaction, the Congress passed an Emergency Quota Act, followed by the 1924 Immigration Act establishing national origin system favoring Northern and Western Europeans to prevent further changes in the ethnic composition of American society. Then in 1939, these are just some highlights of keeping people out, the US refuses to admit 900 Jewish refugees fleeing Nazi Germany. There really wasn't a refugee law at the time. And this modern refugee policy is largely due to the failures of the Holocaust era. After Japan attacks Pearl Harbor, President Roosevelt signs Executive Order 9066, authorizing the Secretary of War to round up, transport, and detain Japanese Americans in internment camps. Pushed forward by the civil rights legislation of the 1965 Immigration Act mandates an end to discriminatory policies that favor white Western Europeans, forever changing the complexion and ethnic makeup of U.S. citizenry. In 1980, the United States Refugee Act is signed into law by Jimmy Carter, and this really is the first time there's a very specific refugee clause in immigration law, which flies in the face sometimes of the idea of America as a place of refuge. 
Following the 9-11 attacks, Congress passes the Patriot Act. George W. Bush shifts jurisdiction of immigration into a new department, Homeland Security, and creates a registry system which mandates the interrogation of all men residing in the U.S. from 25 mostly Arab and Muslim nations. And people sometimes forget that that happened. So here we are in 2017. Donald Trump lost the popular vote in 2016 but becomes the 45th president and, you know, introduces a travel ban, which is then uh, struck down by the courts, uh, which is mostly Muslim countries, and the announcement of ICE raids. In terms of history repeating itself, in 2012, I wrote the libretto for a collaborative multimedia choral symphony. I pulled the phrase, throw them out of town, from a newspaper headline from 1953. So repetition again. So even in light of the potential conflicts that are going on right now, I am furious, but I'm also hopeful that the voices demanding let them in will prevail and that there's no turning back on a multi-ethnic, multi-racial America. And I guess the future of this work in progress experiment of a country remains to be written.